So, when you don't know how to do something, how to fix something, or how something works, what do you do? Ask a teacher? Ask your parents? Ask your friends? Ask someone you really know and trust? No, you go to the internet and ask some randos. But I'm not talking about creeps here, I hope. No, I mean the people of the internet. You know, those people who make how-to videos. Because chances are, if you're trying to figure out something, someone on the internet has already figured it out for you. Things like, how do I unsend a text? No. How do I do a winged eyeliner? How do I get rid of the zit by Friday night? How do I get out of gym class? How do I screen cap Snapchat without getting caught? They'll never know. But then there are things in life that don't have an easy fix, that don't have a simple solution, that don't have a how-to video. Things like what to do when you have problems with family, or when it seems like you have no control in your life, or what to do when someone has done something to you. I mean, clearly, they gotta go. The truth is, there's a lot of life that doesn't have a solution you can just find online. So how do you know what to do when you don't know what to do? So back when I was in elementary school, we, uh, I, I used to get dropped off in the morning and we had these two walkways that went past the center building where like the office and everything was. And I used to walk in there and I remember in fifth grade in, in particularly, it was this one morning and this is one of my only memories from elementary school, it's kind of wild. I was walking and I promise you, there was a $100 bill right on the ground, right there. I picked it up and I remember there's probably about 30 feet between me and the door. And in this 30 feet were decisions that would affect the rest of my future. Okay, maybe not that extreme. But they were, there were multiple decisions that I could make here. And the decision was, do I keep the $100 bill? Do I give the $100 bill back to who it belongs to? Now, I chose the secret third option of think you do the right thing, but really it's probably it didn't end up too well. So what I did when I walked in the door, I found a teacher and I'm like, hey, there was this hundred dollar bill outside. Like, I don't know whose it was, but here. And I just kind of trusted them to give it to who it belongs to. But in reality, there's not really any way of knowing who it belonged to most likely. And what I didn't realize at the time was there, there's a pretty strong possibility that that teacher just kept that $100 bill for themselves. Uh, all in all though, I think it kind of did the right thing. Um, but we find ourselves in these situations a lot of times where maybe it's something small, like you find some money on the ground or, you know, uh, into bigger things. And we kind of face this dilemma of, are we doing the right thing? What is the right thing? What are we What are we going to do? And we kind of argue with ourselves, you know? Like I was very tempted to keep that $100 bill if I'm being completely honest with you for a very, 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 very long time, maybe even still to this day, I wish I kind of kept the $100 bill. Is that the right thing? No. But do I almost sometimes wish that I did keep the $100 bill? 100% absolutely I do. And I'm not necessarily proud of that, but we kind of find ourselves in these situations a lot of times. And that's true today as well, because, especially today, because when we walk into that, I don't like that. Uh, don't stop it, just keep it, it's fine. Um, okay, but that's true today as well. Sometimes the right thing to do just isn't obvious. We don't really know what it is. And it can be difficult to figure out, especially when you're a fifth grader, am I right? But it doesn't necessarily get easier as you get older because for some reason, as you get older, the problems just get harder. So it never really gets easier. So in this series, we've been going through the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. And last week, we left off with Joseph being sold by his brothers into slavery. All right. And so this week we're going to pick back up. And Joseph was sold into slavery to a pharaoh. And a pharaoh is basically a base, like a president, an emperor, a king, like rolled into one. Basically a very authoritative leader that is in complete control. And the, the first verse I really want to read here that's extremely important is, The Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. 
This starts off Genesis 39, it's literally verse two. And so the author of this really wants us to know the Lord was with Joseph. And it's very important for this story because Joseph very soon is gonna find himself in a place where he maybe doesn't know what the right thing to do is. So the interesting thing about Joseph is kind of throughout his whole story, every time he finds himself in a dilemma, somehow the best possible thing in the worst situation happens, at least for a little while. And that kind of happens with Joseph. And I'm gonna let you in on a little hint. It's because the Lord was with Joseph and because Joseph kept turning back to the Lord. And so Joseph here is in a very bad situation. I mean, he is a slave but Joseph actually climbs to the very top of being a slave, I guess, in the sense that he was in charge of maintaining pretty much everything that the Pharaoh had. He kept the Pharaoh's house in order and all of these things. The Pharaoh actually trusted Joseph quite a bit. But here's kind of the catch. As much as Joseph had to listen to Pharaoh and whatever Pharaoh said, Joseph had to obey, the same was true for Pharaoh's wife. And this is where the story gets a little interesting because one day Joseph goes into the house and Pharaoh's wife wants to sleep with Joseph. She just, it's the scripture literally says Joseph was a handsome man and the, the Pharaoh's wife wished to go to bed with him. Okay. Now this, this is a dilemma, right? Joseph under every possible train of logic could probably argue, hey, I deserve this. Hey, I've earned this. I've been sold into slavery. I've been working my butt off and everything is so bad and so out of my control right now. So maybe she's ordering me to do this. So maybe I do. But see, Joseph doesn't think like that because the Lord was with Joseph. So Joseph kept turning to the Lord. So Joseph, when he didn't necessarily know what to do, he does the next right thing. And the next right thing here is that he doesn't sleep with Pharaoh's wife. And so story goes on a little bit and essentially the Pharaoh's wife ends up accusing Joseph of rape even though he was distancing himself from the whole thing to begin with. And what ends up happening, even though Joseph did the right thing, Pharaoh's going to trust and listen to his wife. So what happens after all Joseph's been through finally gets to a somewhat of a better place, keeps following God and keeps choosing the right thing, but he ends up in prison. But see, Joseph, no matter what the potential effects could have been of his decision, still decided to do the next right thing. Because even in the short term, it may have seemed really bad, it may have seemed disadvantageous, but really in the long term, it was all in God's plan for him. And God was gonna use all of this to work through Joseph in such a great way. But we're gonna pick up in that next week. I kind of wanna sit here for the rest of today. So Joseph had integrity. And integrity is really doing the right thing no matter what the outcome is, no matter what the effects of the situation will be. And it's kind of the whole main point of this part of the story is when you don't know what to do, do the next right thing. That's essentially what integrity is. Right now, if you find money on the ground and you're not sure, do I keep it or do I try to return it to who it belongs to? Well, what's the right thing? And sometimes it gets into deeper issues. And when we don't know what to do, it's important we do the next right thing. Now, that can be hard to identify sometimes as well. And so there's some simple steps to being able to identify what the next right thing is. The first one is ask yourself this question. I'm struggling with blank. You just got to be honest. What are you struggling with? What are you confused about? What's not making sense? The second thing is, who can I talk to about it? And I'm gonna go ahead and fill that blank in for you. Your tribe leaders, they're there for that purpose. And then the third thing is simply then saying, well, this is what I'm going to do to make sure this next right thing actually happens. Because there's a difference between knowing what's right and then actually doing what's right. 
And so tribe leaders are great because they're so full of wisdom and we're all here to help you through these problems. But it's also important to have friends and tribe leaders and families around you that are gonna hold you accountable. They're gonna help you actually continue to exercise those right decisions. And that's a big part of why we have small groups. And so hopefully you're getting ready to go into tribe time after watching this video. And if you're not, hopefully you still have a small group or you have a tribe that you can talk to. And no matter what you're going through right now, I hope you reach out to them. And I hope you go through these questions on your own and you're honest about what you're struggling with. You find someone to talk to and then you make steps and progress towards doing the next right thing.